Hello and welcome to another session of Neighbors and Friends. With me today I have a pastor from Hope United Methodist Church, Sherry Lohman. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to talk a little bit about Hope United Methodist specifically and more generally about Methodists. Yes, and, and your congregation is the one out of three uh, United Methodist congregations in Iowa City that has declared itself a reconciling congregation. That's right, that's right. We, um, when I began at Hope, which was um, over four years ago, I knew that I wanted to be in a church that was very open-minded. And so the first day I, I sort of tested the people of hope I said you know are you an open church are you open to all people coming in do you not only um, you know be present with them but do you welcome them and embrace them and I got the nod and I thought yes this is a this is a church <laughs> where I can help serve along with these good people right. And um, so through um, a lot of education in mostly preaching, um, we talked a lot about what it means to be open to other people, what it means to be reconciling. Because sometimes when you say reconciling, people don't really know what that means. No. And so I um, worked to explain what that meant. And, um, and also how Jesus was so inclusive that any, anything that was exclusive was, was not for Jesus. He, he included everyone. He embraced everyone. And that's the way that we believe that, that we should walk. We should be open-minded and inviting and um, loving people just as Jesus did. He was our model. He is our model. Um, and to see people through the eyes of Jesus, right. to see who they are, knowing that we all are imperfect, but that God loves us. Right. Anyhow, we we are all we all have something about us that that um, you know we can't earn God's grace. God loves us each individually and um, for who we are. Right. And and He made us each unique and special. And uh, that's how I believe God wants us to see others. Mm -hmm. We're both wearing a rainbow stole. And the, the stole program in the United Methodist Church was started by a woman, Helen King, out in uh, the East Coast in honor of her lesbian daughter. And she started the program and made and had all of her friends make a lot of stoles that were given out at a general conference, one of the big every four year events. And since then it has been used in several annual conferences. Mm -hmm. We used it once in uh, South Dakota when I still lived there. And uh, I'm hoping to start the program in Iowa, mm -hmm. because we say we're open. Our ads and our banner at the front of our churches say open hearts, open minds, open doors. And yet uh, we have a policy that is not really open. So would you tell us something about what sparked your interest in working on this? Sure. Um, actually, um, I have not been working like you have been to, you know, um, get the word out that um, we consider gays and lesbians our brothers and sisters and making the connections and that. But, but my area of interest is in making sure that the church, our church, Hope United Methodist, is open. And um, we have members who are gays and lesbians, and um, I mean, they're just a part of our church family. They're embraced, we love them, and they feel loved, 
and invited. And they are active. They right. participate. They don't sit back in the corner somewhere. They are active um, participants in our church. Um, I did have a brother who was gay who died of AIDS. It's been several years now. Uh, he probably... Um, uh, just knowing what he went through um, probably has moved me to uh, want to see that people do include uh, that group of people. Um, he had a difficult time. Uh, I could see how he was rejected early on by people um, and how he had to sort of live a life that was not true to himself. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, then he suffered with AIDS and eventually died. Um, but I think sometimes I wonder if, um, if knowing someone personally helps in making that transition about, you know, who they are as a person. Because, you know, when we see each other, when we see each other's souls, um, that's that defines us as who we are as a Christian. God doesn't look at you as, you know, you and I both as white-haired women. God sees our hearts. Yeah. I believe God sees our hearts. Right. And, um, you know, that's, um, that's one, of, one of the things that I think has to be constantly before us. How do you perceive people? And do you just see them objectively or do you become acquainted with them and learn about them and learn who they are. And see them as whole persons. And maybe see that you have a lot of similarities. Right. Mm -hmm. See them right. as whole persons and that you may actually have many similarities. And one of them being that you both worship the same God, <laughs> you know. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and we've grown up in the churches. Uh, I grew up in a church. You grew up in a church. Mm -hmm. And you just were heterosexual, mm -hmm. and I just was a lesbian. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't choose it. That's the right. only choice came in trying to find a partner. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are who we are, mm -hmm. and we're more like our sisters and brothers than we are different. Mm -hmm. uh, Can I ask you a question, Elsie? Right. Okay. So I'm wondering when you just said that we are who we are and it's not like you have a, a choice or a decision to make. It seems to me when you said that that um, what society does now then is, is insist that you deny who you are. In other words, make, try to make you choose something that you, you know, so that you're not true to yourself. Right, right. And and that seems just inconceivable to me, how, how a person could live not being true to oneself. Right. Uh, people see me as a parent, grandparent, and great-grandparent, uh, and they wonder, it, it, well, who is Elsie? I knew I was lesbian from the word go. Mm -hmm. I also knew I wanted to be a mother. Mm -hmm. That many decades ago, mm -hmm. you got married. You had no other way to become a mother. Mm -hmm. And I guess I thought I could do it all my life. Mm -hmm. And then I decided, no way. No way can I pretend all my life. And in fact, my now ex-husband deserved to have a wife who was truly heterosexual. Mm -hmm. I deserved a partner. Mm -hmm. But in society, it was hard. He could, you know, society expected him to have a mate. Yeah. Society did not expect me to Isn't have a mate. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And even as you said that you know, by not being true to yourself, you weren't being true to him either. No. no yeah. It it's interesting fair. how that kind of, you know, moves out in other directions. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, my children have had, uh, he's dead now, but uh, 
I asked one of my children one time, did you ever meant talk with your dad about mom being a lesbian? Mm -hmm. And Eugene said he wouldn't believe it. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. but uh, at all events, um, the woman that he married, I think I'd probably like her if I met her. Mm -hmm. uh, the kids have met her, and, and they they like her. Why not? Mm -hmm. she, she, my children say she made him get out and walk and get some exercise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but your children see you as mother, right? Right? right. Yeah, that's right. who they see. They see your heart as. And you're, you're nurturing as mother. One time I said to them, I guess I probably shouldn't have married because I'm, I'm not a heterosexual, but how would I have had you? Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, you'd have had us somehow, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> you're persistent. <laughs> but at That's any good. rate, um, our denomination has always had gay people. Uh, every family, every denomination, every synagogue has always had gay people. And it was only uh, about four decades ago that our denomination wrote into its policy that they could not, would not uh, honor uh, lesbians and gays as couples expecting us to be celibate all our adult life, mm -hmm. not having a loving partner to go home to. They would not ordain gays and lesbians who were out of the closet and wanted a partner. Too much to ask of any human being. Mm -hmm. And um, about the same time, that that policy was written in to the social principles and, and the Book of Discipline, uh, some gay and lesbian people started a group called Affirmation. And that was about 1972. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, it was in 1972, a general conference, that they spoke about it, and um, then in July of 1975, in Evanston, Illinois, a group of them started a group called uh, Gay United Methodists, which spells gum. <laughs> 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 and they later changed the term to affirmation. Uh -huh. By the way, if you look up affirmation on Google, as I did one time, affirm.org, uh, uh -huh. I got the Mormon site oh, really? for gays and lesbians. Is that right? Interesting. So if you want to get the one for the Methodist denomination, put um affirm okay. dot um, org. Okay. And um, a number of those people, delightful people, um, there was a Mark Bowman who has since left the uh, a delightful young man. I've met him at mm -hmm. conferences. Mm -hmm. uh, he has since left uh, the managerial part of affirmation and gone over to a group called uh, LGBTRAN, a, a resource mm -hmm. network. Mm -hmm. Okay. For, for literature, and also they have assumed housing and, and taking care of the Shower of Stoles project. Mm -hmm. Now, the Shower of Stoles is made up of actual liturgical stoles, oh. like you would wear uh -huh. uh, as you preach uh -huh. or as you conduct a, a funeral or something. And of all the lesbian and gay people who have been uh, defrocked, mm -hmm. have had their credentials taken away from them, many of them have given their stoles to this group 
which was started by two young uh, Presbyterian lesbian pastors, mm -hmm. single. They were given appointments in opposite corners of uh, Missouri. And at churchwide meetings of the Presbyterian people, they would meet mm -hmm. and across a crowded room said to them, themselves, that's what love is. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So they dated uh, from a distance, corresponded from a distance, and uh, then it uh, became public knowledge that they were a couple. And so they were defrocked. Mm -hmm. And uh, Martha asked her uh, people to, to send her a few stoles. She's gotten hundreds and then thousands. Oh, wow. And from all denominations, mm -hmm. including Jewish. Mm -hmm. And um, she did this collection work, and her partner had a regular job to support the two of them. Wow. But that shower of stoles, which you can Google, is uh, taken over uh, or under the wing of this group that mm -hmm. Mark uh, Bowman has gone to. They, they have interesting stories on little little video clips mm -hmm. that you can get on the web of different people who have uh, been defrocked, mm -hmm. denied, uh, denied their appointment. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's a very, very extremely informative, mm -hmm. somewhat painful, yes. but uh, overall a hopeful, mm -hmm. um, exciting, Mm -hmm. collection of stories Not bad. Yeah. Uh, and and some people of course have left one denomination and joined another uh, some people have left uh, the Methodist and gone over to the United Church of Christ mm -hmm. and then uh, gradually hope to come back mm -hmm. change just takes a long time doesn't it right. sometimes it just, uh, you want things to happen quickly, but you know, every generation, it seems like, has to relearn many of the things that we've already um, struggled with in the past. And so it's just an ongoing journey. Right. Yeah. Like this one article here I had that uh, about that change. Look at the change, and this is from uh, Affirmation's uh, newsletter, which is called Out. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, this was a daily publication uh, at, at a general conference. And uh, the LGBT affirmative groups put out newsletters mm -hmm. every day at these. Wow. Uh, wow, a lot yeah. of work. Keep things in front of people. Right. Yeah. And they said, uh, and this one from April 2008, look at the changes many of us have seen already within United Methodism. Once we considered the consumption of alcohol a critical sin, until recently our ritual for bad wine, even within the celebration of Christ's Last Supper, clergy were ordained or fired over whether they used liquor. Yet today it can again be part of our worship, as it has been in Christianity for centuries. We do recognize overindulgence as a problem, but moderate use is rarely even considered worth noting. And it's like the sexuality issue. Uh, people who are naturally gay or lesbian can in no way be asked to pretend to be straight. It's not fair to the other spouse. It's not fair. And what I did was not fair. Uh, 
and I wished my husband well when I left him. Mm -hmm. But I didn't tell him why I was leaving. I just said I was leaving. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, uh, so the church has changed. It has. Yeah. The, the point in liquor is moderation. Uh, and the point in sexuality is faithfulness, mm -hmm. whether a person's straight or whether a person's lesbian or gay. The point is faithfulness. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, um, So the church, working on this topic. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, faith faith certainly enters into that. But, you know, I go back to that initial statement that um, God, God created us and God loves us. Right. And he created us as we are. And if he didn't somehow want the different kinds of gifts that gay and lesbian people were made uh, with. He wouldn't have made us this way. I don't think. Yeah, I don't yeah. think he's a joker. No. I, I don't think he's mean. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll make some lesbians so they can be kicked around. I, I just no. not, no, no, no. Another group then is the Reconciling Movement, the Reconciling Ministries Network which is an umbrella group that has a reconciling clergy group, a reconciling parents group, and a reconciling students group. And then, just about a decade ago, a reconciling uh, people of color. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, includes our black brothers and sisters, sure are Chinese, are Japanese, are Native American, all people who aren't white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and they say, too, we're here, we're queer, we're part of the church, we grew up in the church, or, as adults, we were seeking an mm -hmm. open church. Yeah. And we like the Methodists, we just wish we were fully welcome. Mm -hmm. It's good for folks to know that there are those sites that they can go to and be supported by and learn. Right. I mean, even if you're not gay or lesbian, um, you can go and and learn. Right. You know, about. Right. It's yeah. it's it's helpful for uh, family members, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters, or parents. The parents group was started by. Uh, a couple in Ohio who had uh, a gay, I've forgotten whether it was a gay son or, or a lesbian daughter, mm -hmm. I've forgotten. But both of them were pastors, uh, the, and they started this uh, reconciling network for parents. And their newsletter, I think, is called Connection. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, the student newsletter is called Mosaic, and by the way, uh, United Methodist uh, young people have Mosaic. It's also the name of the network for Jewish gay and lesbian people. Oh, okay. <laughs> so interesting. interesting. So, um, and at that that site too is very, uh, very informative. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's good for us to turn to because uh, our Jesus was a Jew. That's right. That's right. And, um, and inclusive. And inclusive. Mm -hmm. And radical. And radical, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Radical equality, I think, you know, um, with Jesus was for everyone. It wasn't just for a select few. Uh, yeah. It may shocked people. Uh, they wouldn't have. They wouldn't have killed him if if they hadn't been mm -hmm. shocked. Well, he sometimes went outside of the traditions, and right. um, because he stuck to the heart, and not to you know, 
the law or say, you know, culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. I know that uh, because of policy, you have not been allowed to officiate at any gay or lesbian weddings, mm -hmm. even in the last few months when it's legal That's in right. Iowa. Yeah, you're right. Yes. But the marriages, the civil marriages of your membership uh, are honored. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And at some future date, not too long, we hope you'll be able to celebrate the wedding. That's the, I think that's the direction things are moving, Elsie. I think there's reason for hope. That's a good name for your church. Yeah, thank you. So, um, another uh, work of education is done by that group here in Iowa called One Iowa. Mm -hmm. which is working to help people understand the difference between a marriage and a wedding. That the marriage is a certificate one gets and records at the courthouse. And that's the legal part. Mm -hmm. And the wedding part is in a place of worship or out the uh, on a mountaintop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wherever, wherever you are being fed and growing, that's where you need to connect. Um, and of course, um, be among people because we're, we're not islands. We need to be in fellowship with other people to hold each other accountable and to build up, um, you know, not the church, but really God's kingdom. Right. This this is God's holy ground that we're on and, right. and we are are just the stewards of this good earth and to keep it holy ground. And, um, you know, I brought a small book with me. Um, I, I didn't bring it here on the table, but um, it's uh, Bishop Reuben Job's book about um, um, keeping the ordinances of God. It's called Three Simple Rules, and it uh, he talks about um, do no harm, um, the Hippocratic Oath, you know, and of course that is in relationship with other people. Do all the good you can, and the the third thing is um, love God and neighbor, and uh, serve God and. That's how we serve God, is by serving and love God, by serving and loving our neighbors. It doesn't say our, our white neighbors or our straight neighbors. It's our neighbors. Yeah. And, and there's nothing in the baptismal uh, uh, ritual, a little footnote that says, if upon reaching uh, puberty or uh, maturity you discover you're gay or lesbian, this baptism is no effect. No, there's nothing written like that. <laughs> no. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Elsie. Thank you for sharing thank with you us. That. Thank you. And the do no harm. Yeah. So we hope and pray yeah. that at some near, very near point, our Book of Discipline will correct itself and while it says sex is God's good gift, we'll also say that the gays and lesbians are encouraged to enjoy this gift in faithfulness the same as anybody else. Do no harm and stop kicking us out. <laughs> Blessings to you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.